Hi all and welcome back to the garage. Today we'll be doing some electrical work on the Africa Twin. We'll be installing the OEM 12 volts outlet, uh, auxiliary power outlet. Uh, these two parts here. This is a 7.5 amp fuse which is ridiculously placed underneath the fairing. Uh, so if you do install this Remember not to use uh, an electrical pump or anything that draws more than 7.5 amps uh, out of the outlet because it's a nightmare to replace the fuse. Um, we'll also be installing my custom um, Garmin GPS mount. Uh, I have a separate video on how to modify the mount in order to remove all the mess that is the Garmin cable system. Uh, since we'll be drawing both of these out of the uh, front outlet and we'll also be installing the sub harness which is the OEM part to use with the uh, OEM fog lights which is why this has uh, more wires than the, just the two power wires uh, the blue and black one here uh, if you feed 12 volt voltage into that one um, you'll light up the um, the fog light indicator on the dashboard that's a fancy twist if you want to install auxiliary lights on the bike and want that indicator to work. Uh, there are two rubber grommets which we'll be using to make things nice and pretty in there. And we'll also be replacing uh, the, wind, the OEM windshield with uh, my personal favorite, the Fabry Super Sport version. So let's get uh, stuck in. So to um, install the electrical stuff we'll have to take off the fairing, the front cover, windshield, uh, stuff like that. Uh, in order to access the wiring that is uh, underneath uh, the front cover here, above the headlights. Uh, so we'll start easy by uh, removing the seat. That's uh, most of the disassembly we need to do in order to reach the electric stuff which is uh, inside here. So we'll start off from, uh, from this end. Um, officially you need to remove the left uh, signal, uh, this whole panel here. It makes it a lot easier but it's not strictly necessary. Uh, so we start by removing the rubber grommet that sits inside the, uh, the plug here. You can press it from the back side, this one. Just take that out. Take off the ring from the power outlet and feed the cable through. And then insert the ring on the cable and access it from the back. There's a small notch in this one so it only fits in one direction. And then just fasten it with the nut from the back side. So uh, once we're back up here, we have the cable from the auxiliary power outlet. Just feed it up through here. And then behind. 
behind the bar. Under here. Like that. That's off to the side. Uh, what we're looking for here is the white connector that you see underneath uh, here. So in order to access that, remove the rubber gasket from the instrument panel connector. Just pull that back. Push down on the center tab. And pull out the connector. Then there's a black two pin connector up here. There's a, it sits on a stay uh, on the panel here. There's a small tab in the back. So you pull that towards the connector and push the connector out. And you can disconnect that just to give yourself some more room to work. Same story with the white connector. There's a tab in the back there. Push that towards the connector and pull it out. Inside here, there's a dummy weatherproofing connector. So you just pull down the tab, oops, pull out the connector. And this is the uh, puppy that we were looking for. So, uh, let's get the cables up here. What we want to do is to the sub harness cable is going to connect into here. So we'll pull that underneath the, the bar. Give yourself some cable to work with. And connect into that one. In order to tidy up, we might as well reseat the connector on the stay inside. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but the white one goes on the lower stay. So you have a click and then reconnect the black connector, the two pin. That, that goes on the upper stay, like that, and then you can reinstall the instrument cluster. Get the rubber gasket, there is a quite visible groove in here where the rubber gasket sits. Remember to get that all the way in in order to obtain the weather protection for that connector. So with that out of the way, we have the sub harness here, and we have the um, cable from the power outlet here. So then we need to connect this one and the GPS mount. Let's put up the GPS mount uh, temporarily. So as mentioned, I have a separate video on how to uh, customize the uh, Garmin mount in order to lose all the cable that's on there originally. I'll just loosely install this now just to keep it in place. You may also have read about the weakness of this bar here. Uh, I haven't really had a problem with it yet, but uh, just in case I'm gonna in another video install the reinforcement bar for it in order to uh, avoid that issue should it ever be come to that. Which is of course ridiculous because the, I mean Honda has to know that when they install the parrot peg up here people are gonna 
put GPSs on it. So it makes no sense that that won't hold up. But anyway, it's a cheap fix. So the cable here, just put it loosely under the plastic cover here, and that'll be almost invisible when everything is mounted back, back together. Try to keep everything behind the uh, main bar here. So we put that cable down there. As mentioned, we have two rubber grommets. So we're gonna put one on each side. We're gonna sit like this. So we'll put the sub harness and the GPS connection over here. And then we'll put the auxiliary power connection and stuff over here. <coughs> And obviously this one is going to connect over. So we'll put that up inside here. And that will come back down on the other side. connectors into the grommet first. Get those all the way in. Put in the connector from the auxiliary. And the GPS. use the that one for the uh, the uh, accessory for the um, power connector and the one that's meant for the fog lights we'll use for the GPS for now so connect those up and then we'll try to stuff most of it inside the rubber grommets and tight over there. Put a zip tie in to secure it up here around the bar. side, put in the fuse, and the connector, these are kind of tight, but it'll come through in the end.
And then this one has a lot of a lot of cable, as you can see. I'm gonna avoid this this uh, mount here, which is for the front spoiler. Uh, no, the front cover. So what we do is pull up the cable in the back here. Insert the connector for the rubber grommet. Connect that one. Put everything into the rubber grommet there. And again, we'll secure that with a cable tie to the main bar. This cable here will do a zip tie to the main bar. And we'll stuff all that cable in behind it. Once that's done, all this will be tight uh, behind the, um, the front cover. So no worries about these. Don't rattle or anything like that. Uh, so the rubber grounds are doing their, their job. So we'll get the front panel, front cover. So next step is to fasten the GPS mount. The walnuts from Honda get lost inside the fairing from time to time. But with the Fabry windscreen, they actually supply some walnuts that are larger uh, on top so they don't get lost as easy. So if you compare the Fabry one to the OEM from Honda, 
quite a difference. So installing these instead will hopefully make it slightly harder to <laughs> lose one inside the fairing. They also do supply some smaller well nuts that sit in the middle, which is not used by the uh, standard windscreen from Honda. So the Pabri one has six uh, bolts in total. So this is the Fabry screen. They have slightly shorter screws on the uh, middle ones. screws in the top and bottom. Like that. There it is installed. We have the uh, auxiliary power outlet, we have the GPS powered, everything like that, and we have the uh, electrical installation in the front up to par. Uh, everything is back together, everything is working. Uh, I hope that uh, helps someone, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.